Hello, everyone. In this video, we will discuss one of the essential features of our country-led approach to designing governance indicators, specifically using existing data and data management capacity. Governments, their international development partners, and civil society around the world are all trying to produce reliable systems for capturing data on public safety and justice. Increasingly, technological advancements hold the promise of faster, more responsive data management systems, with answers right at the tips of our fingers. But for many criminal justice agencies in the developing world, the financial resources and technical expertise required to implement these systems are often just not available. In our prior experience, where institutional resources are limited, we often encourage our partners in these agencies to first consider using their own existing data and data management systems, to explore innovative ways of repurposing the information they keep in administrative reports, case files, journals. Using this existing data and data management capacity not only affords them a more budget neutral and consequently more realistic path for reform, but it helps affirm institutional ownership by celebrating the value already found in current approaches and processes. It also reduces the reliance on external expertise that often will not be available to these agencies over the long term. So where might you begin to look for the right kinds of data in your institution? Well, that depends on several factors, including the institution's comfort level with research and development and the commitment of the institution's leadership towards meaningful reform. For instance, you may want to work with the data produced from a single discrete department or unit, especially if you're introducing a really radical measure and wish to first demonstrate a proof of concept to promote institutional acceptance. On the other hand, if institutional acceptance is a given, you might wish to look at data that flows throughout the entire institution, from frontline staff right up to the executive. But for whichever starting point you deem appropriate for your agency, we have just a few quick suggestions for identifying the right kinds of data to use. First, have an idea in advance of the questions you're seeking to answer and the possible relationships you think will explain them. Now, this doesn't mean these ideas and theories won't evolve as you explore. They often do. It just means you'll be more efficient in your search. Second, Prioritize data that should be easy to generate and simple to understand, avoiding any difficulty for frontline staff and supervisors to produce, interpret, and use that information. And third, identify pieces of data that are sensitive to changes in institutional performance. Data that shows variation over time or space will better allow you to capture the effect of what happens when agency strategies and tactics are modified. Now, these points are well illustrated in a previous collaboration between the Program in Criminal Justice and the Jamaica Constabulary Force, the JCF, to develop indicators of operational efficiency, and more importantly, indicators that demonstrate the JCF's value in ensuring public safety to external stakeholders. In 2009, the JCF began work with us to review standard operational activity reports that each station sent to their headquarter daily. And from these reports, we helped our partners develop an indicator of police performance, focusing on the success rate of police searches. This hit rate indicator, as we called it, aimed to link key police activities such as raids, traffic stops, searches, to results such as arrests and seizures of guns and ammunition. Now, this information would inform decisions about the effectiveness of deployment patterns and help assess the relative performance of divisional commanders in implementing policing strategies. As a result, this indicator helped incentivize more carefully planned police action, especially in police divisions with low hit rates or troubled community relations. Now, initially the data were not perfect. There wasn't a quality assurance mechanism in place at the time to check the validity of the reports. And there were often disagreements 
among the different police stations about what to count as a search or as a raid. But by focusing attention on the relationship between searches and hits, we and our research partners in the JCF hope to raise important questions within the agency about the value of frequent and intrusive police activity. We also believed that having the comparisons between divisions with relatively high and low yields for searches displayed in a single chart would enable the commissioner to encourage the adoption of good practices, especially from divisions with preferable results. So, even as you consider ways of improving your evidence-based platform for criminal justice policy and operations, we encourage you to not overlook the data and systems that are already in place. With a little curiosity and flexibility, you may just find the tools to spur meaningful reform. Thank you for watching.